Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about abdominal trauma. Most commonly injured organ in blunt trauma of abdomen is spleen. Most common injured organ in penetrating trauma of abdomen is liver followed by stomach and then small intestine. Most common injured organ in gunshot injury is small intestine. Most common injured organ in seat belt injury is mesentery. Most common injured organ of small intestine in gunshot injury is um, part of small intestine is jejunum. First investigation done in blunt trauma abdomen is fast. Gold standard investigation done in blunt trauma abdomen is CECT. So first we will see fast. Fast is focused uh, assessment with ultrasonography for trauma. So this is an emergency ultrasound which is performed very fast within 2 to 4 minutes. The sites of abdominal thor thoraco abdominal injuries include first we have pericardiac sac, second perihepatic sac, third perisplenic region, four pelvic region. So in the pericardiac sac this includes subxiphoid transverse view, perihepatic region is right upper longitudinal view whereas perisplenic region is left upper longitudinal view and pelvic region is suprapubic view. So in all these four sites we will put the fast probe and the aim of this is to find the identify the fluid in the peritoneum that is there are three four sites that is pericardiac site this is perihepatic perisplenic suprapubic this is perihepatic perihepatic pericardiac perisplenic and this is suprapubic so the main thing here is the this is not sensitive for retroperitoneal fluid and more than 100 ml of fluid can be picked up by the fast the angle that we use is 45 degrees then the next important thing is e fast e fast is extended fast where along with the normal fast which we do for four views that is pericardiac perihepatic perisplenic and pelvic we also do we also do two additional views that is we do this for right thoracic view and also for left thoracic view so in the extended fast uh, we see normally seizure sign is seen normally but if there is any pneumothorax then barcode sign or stratosphere sign is seen in pneumothorax investigation of choice for pneumopericardium is x-ray best investigation for pneumopericardium peritoneum is cct investigation of choice for pneumoperitoneum is x-ray but best investigation for pneumoperitoneum is cct Air always causes artifacts in the USG. Those artifacts are seen as stratosphere sign. Then we will have to learn about the next investigation that is diagnostic peritoneal lavage. This diagnostic peritoneal lavage is done for done uh, blunt trauma abdomen patient. Here we will insert a catheter after intra-abdominal incision and that catheter is put directed towards the pelvis and then aspiration is done. If this is the abdomen, this is the umbilicus, you will put an uh, infra-umbilical incision and you will put a catheter which is directed towards the pelvis aim of this is to detect the intraperitoneal fluid so here you will install one liter of normal saline or ringer lactate uh, then re-aspirate the fluid and send for examination okay first you will in uh, you, we will install one liter of a uh, normal saline or ringer lactate into the catheter into our pelvis and then we will have to re-aspirate the fluid and it is sent for a uh, examination at least 400 ml of fluid should be re-aspirated then if the if there is pregnant or pelvic tumor then we can do and we have we can put a supra umbilical incision if there are if there is uh, if you see if there is more than 10 ml of flank blood is seen if there is more than 
if there is more than 10 ml of plank blood is aspirated or in the aspirate when you send it for cytology if rbc is more than 1 lakh per millimeter cube or uh, in blunt trauma rbc more than 1 lakh per millimeter cube or in stab injury rbc more than 10000 10000 10, per millimeter cube and wbc more than 500 per millimeter cube in both um, amylase more than 19 international units per liter alp that is alkaline phosphatase uh, more than 2 international units per liter or bilirubin more than 0 0.01 milligram per deciliter in all these cases you will have to suspect that there is blunt trauma or stab injury according to the values that you get blunt trauma abdomen should be treated if it is one first based on hemodynamic stability first if the systolic blood pressure is more than 90 millimeters of hg then the person is said to be stable and if the systolic blood pressure is less than 90 millimeters of hg then the person is kept as unstable in unstable cases first you will do fast if fast is uh, after fast you will have to go to explore if fast is positive then you will have to do exploratory laparotomy if fast is not available or unequivocal then we can do diagnostic peritoneal lavage if this is positive then we can go to exploratory laparotomy next if systolic blood pressure is more than 90 millimeters of hg then the patient is stable so in stable cases we will have to do the peritoneal signs so in stable cases we should do peritonite we should see peritonitis signs if there are signs of peritonitis like rebound tenderness guarding rigidity abdominal tenderness is present if there is no peritonitis signs then we can do fast and then go to CECT because patient is stable but if there are signs of peritonitis then you should directly go to exploratory laparotomy and after CECT if the CECT is positive then you go to exploratory laparotomy again so this is how you are going to treat the patient on with blunt trauma abdomen then in blunt trauma abdomen two things one if the unstable patient and stable patient first investigation in both unstable or stable patient is fast investigation of choice for unstable patient it is fast but for stable patient it is CECT then after blunt trauma we have to learn about the peritoneal trauma so in the peritoneal trauma the patient is suffering from hemodynamic based on hemodynamic stability if the patient is less than 90 mill sorry if the patient's systolic blood pressure is less than 90 millimeters of hg that is if the patient is unstable then we have to do an exploratory laparotomy should be done if the patient's systolic blood pressure is more than 90 millimeters of hg and if he if he is stable then the treatment depends upon whether the wound is gunshot wound or the wound is stab wound if the wound is gunshot wound then again the treatment depends upon the site of the wound if the gunshot wound is present in the anterior part of abdomen then we have to go to exploratory laparotomy if this gunshot wound is present in other sites then we have to first do CECT if this uh, CECT is positive then we go to exploratory laparotomy second if the patient has stab wound then even here it depends upon different things whether it is the site and also the stainage so if the stab wound is present in back or flank then we should do CECT and then go to exploratory laparotomy if the stand stab wound shows evisceration or if there is omentum or if, it, if there is bile leakage which is present in the wound then we have to do exploratory laparotomy or if there is anterior abdominal stab injury is seen in such cases you will have to uh, if there is anterior abdominal stab injury is seen in this case you will have to do local wound exploration here first you will in local wound exploration first and foremost you will have to enlarge the wound put a finger and see whether the peritoneum is breached or not if you see that the peritoneum is breached if the peritoneum is breached then you will have to admit the patient 
so if the peritoneum is not breached then takes just take the skin sutures if the peritoneum is breached admit the patient and then observe the patient you will after admission you will have to do cct if cct is positive then observe the patient then we have to do serial examinations of hemoglobin every 8 hourly and then if the patient is unstable or if there is leukocytosis or if there is significant decrease in hemoglobin more than 3 gram per deciliter then you have to do exploratory laparotomy should be done then Okay. In trauma, one important thing is in trauma, we cannot perform laparoscopy. Always you should do exploratory laparotomy when in doubt. Then we have something called as emergency exploratory laparotomy. Emergency exploratory laparotomy. This is done with a vertical midline incision which is extending from xiphi sternum to the pubic bone. As we can adequately explore the abdomen for any organ injury so if th that is for adults but if we have to do this exploratory uh, emergency exploratory laparotomy if it is to be done in children less than 12 years of age then we have to give a transis transverse incision so this is important points about the abdominal trauma now in the next class we will learn about each particular type of traumas thank you for watching